Okay, so we're just going to come into camera settings for an ideal studio setup. Um, when you are using these, these are a starting point, so they're actually, you know, you can adjust them for to suit your particular requirements. But we always shoot with a studio in manual mode, never use any of the others, aperture priority, time value or program. The reason being is that we're measuring the brightness uh, that, which triggered from the flash. Now, if you pointed your camera at your subject, the modelling light is going to be the dominant light source because obviously the flash doesn't light up until you press your shutter. So if you imagine then that your camera in the other modes, in aperture, shutter and program, what it's going to do is take a meter reading from your ambient light, i.e. your modelling light. So if you then fire the exposure, fire the button and trigger the flash, what will happen is that it will be a misreading because the flash will be of a higher intensity than the actual modelling light. So we have to have manual on the, on the camera mode here in order to control it. So we then uh, set up the flash with the right power. You're in manual here and the settings then we put in the camera will stay at that setting to match or marry up the flash power. Whereas if you're in the other modes, it will want to change every time you take a picture. So manual on the dial is absolutely a must. The other things then for starting point is your shutter speed and your aperture. Uh, shutter speed, I tend to start at 125. This is where flash then will be the dominant uh, light source. Ambient light will not really take hold. If I put my shutter speed slower, what will happen is then more of the ambient light in the room, if there is any coming from a window or so on, will actually start to impact on the result of the picture. So when you want the, the flash to be the main light source, we put that 125 and then the ambient light will have little or no effect. If you go above this, you might start to have a, a, an odd exposure. So what can happen is if you go above, say, 200th of a second, some cameras a little bit higher, but I wouldn't really push it too much higher, um, then what you're going to get is an uneven exposure where your shutter doesn't actually have a full exposure with the flash duration. So it catches the shutter. So 125 is a really an ideal starting point for your camera setting. Then we go to the F number. Now the F number, obviously again you can change this to whether you're doing a, a, a small group or whether you're doing an individual um, or a larger group. That F number obviously will be the variable for you. So where we don't really change the shutter speed that much, the F number will give you the creative effect that you want. I've got it on F8 as a starting point, but I'm just doing an individual. So I could actually put that down to 5.6 or F4. All of those would give a lovely um, shallow depth of field. By having a shallow depth of field, it means that if you have any scuffs or anything on the background or creases, if you're doing a bed sheet, for example, we're looking at setups that will just can be used for anybody, any, any location. You can do this in your, your living room, uh, sort of a plain bed sheet. If it has creases and you're using a very shallow depth of field, they will be blurred so they won't show up. Um, here we've got paper, which obviously is quite creaseless, but you still use shallow depths of field. You don't want the background to be as pin sharp as the model itself. So F8 or 5.6 is a nice, starting point for an individual, um, you can go lower. Then the ISO, well, we want the best quality. So your, your uh, shutter works the best in terms of, sorry, your camera has the best uh, sensitivity rating at 100 ISO. That's when there's less noise um, or, or, or then the quality or, or the clarity is, is at its best. Because you have 100 ISO, we then change the power of the flash to match the light of the room. So we don't have to worry if that's very low and you sort of think, well, actually, in this studio at the moment, it's quite dark. It doesn't matter because the power of the flash will, will override that. So we keep our, our ISO down at 100. Bear in mind, some cameras will only go down to 200 and just set it to 200 if that is the case for you. 
Never have your camera on rapid fire when you're doing um, studio photography because your flash will not keep up with your rapid fire trigger. So then you'll have maybe one shot fully exposed, maybe the other one partially exposed and so on. So never have it on rapid fire, you don't really need to use it. The, the, the beauty of studio is that it's a slower pace. Um, the other thing you might want is to, if you're not shooting raw, you might want to work out your white balance. So auto white balance can be quite cold and neutral when you're doing flash photography. Flash in itself is quite a blue light, so you might want to warm it up. And this is something that there's no absolute, you, you do to what your tastes require. So in terms of white balance settings, auto white balance will be quite a cooler one for matching the light of the flash itself. But you, if you have a flash setting, you can put it on flash. Cloudy day is another one that warms up the um, skin tones. So you can just vary it to suit your, your tastes. But ju just be aware that not to set something too warm. It's better to actually be as we would see it with our natural uh, vision rather than actually trying to warm something up. You can do that after in Photoshop. The reason why I said if you're shooting raw, it's not too, too much of a problem what you set it on because this can then be changed after on the computer. However, you would still look at it when you are editing your raw, just to bear in mind. So that's really it. The other things aren't relevant to when you're doing studio photography. You've got your shutter speed, aperture, ISO, take it off rapid fire, and then make sure if you do want to change your white balance, you change it to either auto, cloudy day or flash symbol. They'll be quite warm.